The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild stands as a testament to how far the Zelda series has come in the past 30 years. The entire game is basically one huge easter egg to all the past titles. From Skyward Sword references to the original Legend of Zelda, this game has it all. Welcome back everyone to my third Breath of the Wild Then and Now video. Today I'll be covering three locations from The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Quick disclaimer, every location mentioned in this series has to do with the title selected. Some locations may not look entirely the same. As with any new iteration of The Legend of Zelda, developers change locations to fit the art style or sometimes the gameplay. On the lore side of things, Breath of the Wild takes place more than 10,000 years after any of the Zelda games. Towns and monuments move around quite often in the Zelda series, so while they may not be in the proper location on the map, they might still be referencing a past Zelda title. Please keep in mind that these videos are not only made for the sake of lore purposes, but are also made to show how things have changed over the years since said game's release. With that out of the way, let's get into these locations. Today I'll be featuring the Great Bridge of Hylia, Arbiter's Grounds, Hyrule Castle, and Hyrule Castle Town. The Great Bridge of Hylia Located above Lake Hylia in both Twilight Princess and Breath of the Wild, this bridge is known to be the longest in Hyrule. In the era of Twilight, the Great Bridge wasn't actually that long. Thousands of years later, it looks as though it's been added onto as the lake has grown in size and it is more than twice the length of the one seen in Twilight Princess, living up to its name. The bridge has basically been completely redesigned and destroyed again by this point in Hyrule's history. Over to the left and to the right of the bridge we can see the same Lake Hylia from Twilight Princess. To the right of Link moving north on the bridge, you can see a waterfall that's in the same location in both games. Over to the left in Breath of the Wild, you can see Hylia Island. During Twilight Princess, this island was much more lively than it is in Breath of the Wild. Hylians used to come to the island to offer prayers to the spirit Lineru, and Friar used it for his cannon. Since then, it looks like the lake has stripped away everything that once drew Hylians to it. Who knows, maybe the lake bed temple is still left behind under the water. Putting lore to the side, the Zelda team is clearly making a reference to Twilight Princess with this one, allowing the bridge to make a grand return with a massive update. Next one up is Arbiter's Grounds. Located in the Gerudo Desert, Arbiter's Grounds was once home to the Mirror of Twilight, guarded by the ancient sages. Once used as a prison to hold criminals before execution, Arbiter's Grounds has a very dark past, one that'll save for a theory later on. During Twilight Princess, Arbiter's Grounds is a dungeon that Link must complete to reach the Mirror of Twilight. By the events of Breath of the Wild, Arbiter's Grounds has either been destroyed and only the front entrance remains, or it's completely buried under the sand. Since Arbiter's Grounds is in ruins, there really isn't much to compare, but it's cool to see little easter eggs like this in Breath of the Wild. Before we wrap this one up, I just want to point out that the Mirror of Twilight may have also been referenced in Breath of the Wild. Located clear across the map to the west of Arbiter's Grounds, a monument can be found that resembles the Mirror of Twilight. This monument is even in fragmented pieces similar to when the mirror was broken by Zant in Twilight Princess. Though it's just an easter egg and a side quest, and it's likely not the mirror of Twilight at all, I thought it would still be nice to include in the video. Last we have Hyrule Castle and Hyrule Castle Town. Before I continue, I just want to point out that the castle and town aren't the exact same as the version seen in Twilight Princess. Hyrule has expanded and grown quite a bit since the era of Twilight. Breath of the Wild is just another notch in this old castle's belt. For gameplay reasons, the castle and the town have been redesigned to fit Breath of the Wild, but they definitely do resemble the ones from Twilight Princess the most. I'll start with the town first. Coming from the front entrance, you can see that the gate has been changed since the era of Twilight, but when entering the center of the town, you can see that the fountain in the middle looks very similar to the one from Twilight Princess. 
Around the center are the same exact red flags that once decorated the area. Calamity Ganon did such a number on this place there really isn't much else to compare other than the fountain and the center. But from this vantage point you can see that the castle once had the same walkways as in Twilight Princess. It's sad that we couldn't see Hyrule Castle Town alive and well in this game. Moving over to the castle, I'm only going to be showing off a view from afar, as both of these castles are massive and running through them wouldn't give the comparison any justice at all. Also note that due to gameplay reasons, Nintendo didn't want us running through the same castle a second time, I mean come on. From this distance, it's safe to say the structure of the castle has stayed very close to what it looked like in Twilight Princess, with some added Hylian crests. Over the years, Hyrule Castle has been added to, making it look much larger in Breath of the Wild. It's possible that the royal family continued to build up the castle until it was higher in elevation than Castle Town, but that's just how it looks in Breath of the Wild. Either that or sometime between Twilight Princess and Breath of the Wild, Possibly the first coming of Calamity Ganon, who knows. The castle was destroyed, forcing the royal family to ultimately rebuild the castle, adding all of the new structures surrounding the area in Breath of the Wild. All in all, both castles are in the same general location on the map. Given that a few things have moved like Zora's Domain for instance, these two castles are the biggest iterations of Hyrule Castle in the series, so it's cool to see the comparison of the two. That just about wraps up all the Twilight Princess locations I could find, but I do have a few honorable mentions. Kakariko Village Out of all of the versions of Kakariko Village, I feel as if Breath of the Wild and Twilight Princess have the most in common. Though Kakariko in Twilight Princess is dry and arid, you get the same small village vibe as the one from Breath of the Wild. The main reason Kakariko made it into my honorable mentions was just to compare the two locations since its last 3D appearance and now. Kakariko is always moving around and is likely never the same village in most Zelda titles excluding a few. The Bridge of Elden is the next one. Now these two bridges aren't the same so I won't be comparing them but the one found in Breath of the Wild is definitely a callback to the one found in Twilight Princess. Last honorable mention goes to Zora's Domain. A lot of you left comments about how Breath of the Wild Zora's Domain looks similar to the one found in Twilight Princess, so here's a quick comparison of the two. I'll leave you all with that clip. You guys all have a good one. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out.